Hello, everyone. Everyone ready? Ooh, I feel very, everyone got quiet, really? Great. So I am pleased to do the introduction for our amazing Mary Harriman Award winner, Senator Margaret Rose Henry, a paragon of public service. <laughs> So she's a paragon of public service for more than 30 years, displayed the fearless determination, trailblazing spirit, and undeniably community impact reflective of Mary Harriman herself. Born in Rain, Louisiana, Margaret Rose Henry recognized from an early age the transformational value of education. She became the first in her family to attend college earning a BA in psychology and sociology for Texas Southern University and an MA in community development and leadership from Springfield College. With these degrees, she launched a robust career as a nonprofit executive and legislator. She would receive many distinguished awards for her exemplary life as a public servant, as an advocate for the rights of citizens throughout the community. Senator Henry became the first African-American woman to serve in the Delaware State Senate and was majority whip and leader. She was a member of the Delaware Senate from 1994 to 2018. In September 2017, she announced she would not seek re-election. Senator Henry has served on a number of boards of trustees in her career, including the Medical Center of Delaware, the National Society of Fundraising Executives, and the Board of Wesley College. Her career in the Senate focused on education, autism, health, housing, crime, gun control, mental health, and services for the elderly. She fought for legislation that restricted gun access for convicted domestic abusers, required reporting for lost or stolen firearms, levied strict penalties for witness intimidation, prohibited discrimination against sexual orientation and gender identity. She co-sponsored one of the first medical marijuana bills ever introduced in the Senate. Her professional career provides inspiration to those who follow in her footsteps. Her accomplishments innumerable, her impact palpable, the community exponentially strengthened by her actions. In 2015, the Junior League of Wilmington, Delaware had an opportunity to see firsthand the effective work Senator Henry could accomplish. They approached her asking if she would sponsor a campaign that would add Ele Delaware to the roster of states that had passed Aaron's Law, a law that requires schools to implement age-appropriate education on preventing child sexual abuse. Senator Henry's response was affirmative and immediate. She began drafting the measure, garnering support among peers and advising the Junior League of Wilmington of potential obstacles they would face and strategize how to overcome them. The bill passed unanimously in both the Senate and the House and was signed into law in less than 10 months time. She offered unwavering support and exceptional advice to the Wilmington League. Though they had never lobbied before and had virtually no government experience, the League, with Senator Henry's guidance, was able to gain support for legislation independent of gender, race, or party. Please join me in congratulating Senator Margaret Rose Henry, the 2019 winner of the Mary Harriman Community Leadership Award. She is as kind as she is fearless. She just has a way of bringing out the best in everyone. She's a great motivator and a great inspiration. If there's something that's controversial, she'll stand her ground. And she's just as firm as can be. She embodies what it is to be a kind, warm, lovely person, and also be a woman working so hard and being so successful in politics. 
She cares about issues that our most neglected populations have to battle and deal with on the day to day, oftentimes by themselves. I honestly don't think that you come across too many people like her in your lifetime. Diverse representation uh, in our highest ranks of decision makers is just really essential. Senator Henry has been that champion for us uh, for several decades. One of the best legislators that has ever served here in the state of Delaware. 20 years of service in the Delaware State Senate, 30 years of human service delivery here in our state. Very committed always to doing the right thing. And that means really helping the people in our state that need the help the most. She's a very revered leader, not just in Delaware, she's revered across this nation. Well, I was born in Rain, Louisiana, and at the age of 11, I moved to Houston, Texas. My father was a longshoreman, and my mother worked as a domestic. So I grew up in a real uh, working class family. And I always tell people I know what it means to not have and to live without, because my father would go on strike. So I appreciate when families are struggling because I understand what it means. I'm the first person in my family to go to college. And I worked very hard and graduated first in my class and went to college on scholarships and I worked. And so for, for me, I was setting an example for my sister and my cousins who came uh, after me. So it was extremely important that I do well because my family had struggled so hard to give me an opportunity to go to school and go to college. In 1981, when I joined, it was really quite a big deal to, uh, to, to be uh, in the Junior League. One of the things that I was most impressed about and the reason why I was willing to join was because of their leadership training. But also you learned the value of, uh, of giving back. I had been a nonprofit executive, but I, it was very helpful to learn how to uh, do things correctly. And so I'm really proud to be a, a Junior Leaguer. When I was first elected to office, it was in 1994. And the unique thing about my race was that I'm a Democrat, but I was run by the Republican Party. And they came to me because I had been a nonprofit executive. I was known for community service, not for political service. And they asked me to run, and there was only a three week window to run this race. And I won. And it was, the Democratic Party thought, oh, that, that's just a fluke, it will never happen again. And I, I ran three times in one year and won all races. The story was that uh, the New York Times covered it. It was big news. The Wall Street Journal covered it because it was that kind of news. It was the, the case study for election results magazine. So little old Delaware, by electing me as the first woman in the Senate, was a big deal. It's amazing for women in the league to look at Senator Henry and see someone who had a really strong career in the nonprofit world first and took that to Dover and just did amazing things for the people of Delaware. Senator Henry is authentic and so what you see is what you get. There is not a hidden agenda. You, she's very articulate to uh, share where she's coming from, where her values are, what she believes will bring about a change for uh, a collective impact on groups of people that are disenfranchised and marginalized. She was involved in any number of nonprofits, both employed and as a volunteer. She's just involved with so many things and it's reflected in the awards she's gotten. She's in the Hall of Fame of Delaware Women. Common Cause gave her an award for, for Lifetime Achievement. A number of organizations have recognized her work because she's done so much for the community. Leadership is a term that I feel like is saturated, but it's something that Senator Henry embodies. She is so deserving of this Lifetime Achievement Award. She's done incredible things for the state of Delaware. It's been a real pleasure and frankly a privilege for me to serve alongside of her over that 20-year uh, career. She's paved the way for African-American females and females as a whole to come up behind her, to feel empowered, to know that we are leaders, to know that we can get things done and that we can truly make an impact in our communities. I'm encouraged by the the fact that women have tenacity nowadays, that you know, we don't have to feel, we have to worry about everything we say and how we say it, and, and have to, we don't have to be as polite. Women are stronger, bolder. They have something that, that they want to say, and they say it.
it is now my incredible honor to introduce to you the two thousand and nineteen mary harriman community leadership award winner margaret rose henry so before you hear from her we have some gifts to give her in addition to this lovely plate from tiffany oh my <laughs> now she's glad she's here. And this wonderful gift from Laura Lively. Uh, Laura Miniotis is a member of the Junior League of Jacksonville, and she has donated um, a necklace to Margaret. So, Margaret. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, Junior Leaguers. <laughs> First of all, I have to apologize. I don't know where they got those pictures from. You know, one of the things I do is I open my home to a lot of young women, and they snuck those pictures. And I did not, I had, I had not seen the film. This is the first time I'm seeing the film. So you can imagine how embarrassed I am. <laughs> you see this big butt at the end of the thing floating around? <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> so I want to say to uh, Laura Lee, uh, the, our national president, and I want to say that uh, all of the officers, I'm just so uh, emotional. And I want to thank the Delaware chapter, Angela, the president, and the president-elect Kyle, and all of the members for nominating me. Because when they said to me, we want to nominate you, I said, yeah, nobody's going to select me, you know. So I said, oh, sure, it's no problem. I had no idea that we would win. And it's a we win because they've supported me in so many endeavors. My friend Lyon Sorensen and I worked in the nonprofit sector before, uh, before I even be became a league member and before we both went to the legislature. I'm so excited, I hope I can say something. I just want to say it's a special honor to be recognized at this time in my life. I just retired in November of this past year. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. <laughs> I've never really made any money, so maybe it's time to make money. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's almost unimaginable that a little black girl born in Rain, Louisiana could achieve what I've been able to achieve. And it's because I was bold enough to stand up to segregation and to a lot of men in the Senate when I was there. You can imagine there were three women I was the only African American, and to be able to move into leadership, you know I had to fight like a dog, right? <laughs> what I learned was that you have to be kind along the way. You have to be respectful along the way. And those are the things that I learned from my grandmother. I was brought up by my grandmother. So when I passed one bill about sexual orientation, and the men called it my Twinkie bill, and I was so, so disheartened, and I thought about that. You know, the people I'm trying to protect don't care what they call it as long as they pass it. And, we, and we, we were able to pass it. One of the bills I'm really proud of is my medical marijuana bill. I was the prime sponsor on that. Because so many people have illnesses now, and marijuana helps. I know we're in Denver. I've never been to Denver. I should go get some, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just scared they're going to search me, you know, before I get back. <laughs> But ser seriously, uh, my life has been about service, whether it's been through United Way, Girls Inc., Delaware Guidance. And so I always tell people that I learned how to be a citizen because of my work in the community, that I had a right to be there because I had earned it by helping meet the needs of the people in my community. I also want to say that Junior League was very different at the time when I was a member. Picture 1981. Most of you are too young to remember that, but you had to be sponsored and then seconded by two people. And if you, you had to be younger than 38, and I was 37. <laughs> and one of my friends said to me, how old are you? And I thought, 37, you, you, you could make it. But what Junior League gave me was authenticity about how to do things the proper way. Uh, I remember things like how to conduct meetings, and my first placement was for a new agency called Delaware Hospice way we train hospice volunteers. By the way, I'm getting new dentures. I'm getting implants, that's why I can't talk. I have to explain why I'm lisping my top teeth are 
not there. <laughs> anyway, they're in the process, you know. But in, anyway, Junior League gave me a chance to horn my skills, to develop confidence, and more than that, to meet so many people who along the way were helpful to me in my career. Because every time I would lobby for something, I could find volunteers who would come and give testimony. And so that's how you get things done. You get things done by networking, by trying to not make any enemies, and by trying to live a purposeful life. And I think, I think I've lived a purposeful life. It's an old life. <laughs> I'm 74 years old, and I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. I'm retired. I don't know what that means yet, because I'm still doing so many things. But I want to sleep late. I want to go to the movies. I want to go to lunch with my friends. I want to uh, earn some money. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. No. I'm, <laughs> I'm joking about that. But seriously, one of the things that I know is that women have to uplift and support each other. It's not a competition. Ladies, we are all beautiful. We are all smart. We are all, you know? One of the things that I learned very early on is that women need to uplift other women and create opportunities. It's so wonderful to watch the new Congress, isn't it? And see all these bodacious women in there who are not going to be told what to do. I love it. I just absolutely love it. The other thing, too, is that most of us who do public service, many of the women go home, and then they also take care of the family and all that. I didn't have a husband doing my laundry or cooking meals for me, right? So what happens is I had wonderful friends who would cook me chickens and leave them in my door. <laughs> but no, seriously, and I would eat for the week because I worked an hour away from home, and by the time I got home after meetings, it was 10 o'clock at night, and how was I going to eat? So again, good women friends. So one of the things that you're supposed to do when you give a speech is to give advice. So I'm going to do that before I faint. <laughs> they wouldn't let me eat before I came up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they do. Anyway, <laughs> I, I'm supposed to give you advice. And so I, I jotted down something, and I have copies if you really think it's something. You have some copies, right? Okay. <laughs> and these are called 10 Qualities of a Woman Leader. The first one is passion. The fundamental essence of what motivates you is what drives you, is what keeps you fighting in order to achieve your goals, even when things get tough. And the second one is intuition. Your ability to understand something immediately without thinking about it a lot. It gives you some unique insight and perspective and helps to guide your decision making. Focus requires that you do not allow anything to distract you from your goal. Focus. I have trouble focusing sometimes. You know, resilience. Your ability to recover quickly from difficulties, it is your ability to bounce back from challenges. Self-awareness, you know what that is. The conscious knowledge of your own self, your own characteristics and who you are. Emotional intelligence, the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions. And consensus building requires the ability to problem solve, establish agreement, and common interest and to build collaborations toward an overall goal, a positive mindset, having an optimistic outlook, and follow through. Demonstrate that you, have, you can make a commitment and you can see it through. And the last one I call sister circle. Your friends who will uplift you, encourage you, and give you direction. So turn around and tell the person you're my sister, and you're my sister. Thank you, because if we do that, there's nothing we can't do with our sister circle. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm taking my cousin. Oh, thank you. So I'm crying, I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> so
Thank you, Senator Henry. You are an inspiration to all of us, and thank you for being a role model to Junior League members everywhere. Like Mary Harriman, you have been guided throughout your life by an extraordinary sense of social responsibility and have leveraged your abundant abilities to be a catalyst for the improvement of our communities. We are privileged to have you as a member of our, of our organization and congratulate the delegates from the Junior League of Wilmington who join us in the celebration. So this is a very exciting day, and I'm going to go off script for a little bit. For those of you who remember my um, remarks at our opening session, when I talked about the gifts the Junior League has given me, the opportunity to get to know Margaret through her application for the Mary Harriman Award winner has been one of the greatest gifts. And then to meet her in person today is another great gift. So thank you again, Junior League. So, on that note, this concludes our 2019 Mary Harriman Award Luncheon. Please feel free to take the table centerpieces as a keepsake, but be mindful that members of those junior leagues, of which the Mary Harriman Award winners belong, please give them preference. And please leave the frames behind, because we recycle. Enjoy the rest of your workshops, which will begin at 1.20. Thank you very much.